What is clear is that when women get the loans, the impact on the family and the society can be dramatic. 93% of all our borrowers have all their school-aged children in school, which to me is just astonishing. We may have been focusing for the last 20 years on the wrong assumption. I think our assumption is, well, they're going to grow their business and the family gets better and better off and eventually steps out of poverty. I don't think that's an accurate perception of what's happening. The priority of the mother is not growing the business, but growing the child's education. Supporting the child in school becomes her st strategy for escaping poverty. When we were talking about their children, they begin to cry, saying, I don't want my children to go the same way I have gone. So you don't imagine how hard they work in order to achieve a better life for their children, because now they know that there is another way. We're in patriarchal societies. We're talking about societies where machismo is the rule of the day. And when all of a sudden, a woman is receiving a $50, $70, $100 loan, it makes profound changes in the family. Five years ago, Saja Sivama lived in a thatched hut without walls. She had taken to begging in the streets for money. When she came home late, her husband would scald her fingers in burning oil. For years, she had been making and selling wigs, but her income was erratic, on average less than one dollar a day. And when she did have some success, her husband would take the profit and spend it on alcohol and gambling. Sivama took out a loan from Spandana, a new microfinance institution in her city. It was for 4,000 rupees, or about $85. She had learned of a company that purchased women's hair. The company then extracted oil from the follicles and sold it for medicinal purposes. With her first loan, Sivama purchased trinkets from a local street vendor. She then went into a nearby village and told the children that if they would collect the hair from their mother's brushes and give it to her, she would give them a trinket. The children delivered more hair than she had expected and Sivama was in business. She sold the hair for a generous profit and began paying back her loan. Today, Sivama employs more than 70 women. In the morning, they purchase trinkets from her and go out to the villages to trade the trinkets for hair. For the most part, Sivama works from her home. The women come to her and she buys the hair from them. The outward improvements in Sivama's life are obvious. But she seems most proud of other, less apparent changes. Savama's most recent loan was for more than $3,000. She bought her husband a motorcycle and hires him to run errands for her. With the success of her business, Savama's concerns are different than they were five years ago. <laughs> It's an unbelievable thing to be able to say if you're a woman with very low skills and low income or low education to say 
This business is what I'm going to be able to use to feed my family, and I know I can keep running it because I have access to capital. Amazing. Think of what that does to the human being. The women that we lent to on a first loan, sometimes, you know, they, their, their head is a bit low. They can't really look at you in the eye. They're kind of shy. They don't really know what, you know, what to expect. Then you go, you know, three years down the road, and these people have been working with, this, with these loans, and they've grown their businesses. And, and these are totally different women. They look you at the eye. They even, when they see you, now it's no longer that shyness, but rather they're starting to negotiate with you. Better rates, you know, a larger loan or something, because it has unleashed all this potential that they had within them that because of a lack of opportunity was trapped.